Hello friends, hope all of you are doing well. In previous video, we have discussed what are amino acids, what are biomolecules, what are the optical properties of the amino acids, and calculation of specific rotation of amino acids and isoelectric point. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss further about the absolute configuration of amino acids that are the D and L forms and R and S form. Apart from that, we are going to discuss standard amino acids and non-standard amino acids. This video is for anyone who is preparing for some competitive exams related to biochemistry or are generally here for the quest of biochemistry to know about amino acids. So let's start with the video. Going to the absolute configuration of amino acids. So first of all, the system is known as DL system. So let's discuss about the DL system first and then we will go to the RS system. So we know that an amino acid which is having a chiral center, chiral center means a, a symmetry, asymmetric carbon, it gives two possible isomers and these two possible isomers are known as enantiomers. Enantiomers are the mirror images of each other, mirror images of each other, okay. So for, as a, for example, if we see this is C, CO negative NH3 plus CH3H, this is the structure of alanine. Alanine is the second amino acid after glycine which is the simplest. So uh, here R group is replaced by CH3 group. So it is alanine NH3 plus group is present on the left side. So it will be L alanine and when it is present on the right side it will be D alanine. So these are the two forms of the amino acids L alanine and D alanine. So generally all the amino acids, amino acids are derived from L glyceraldehyde. So that's why all the amino acids are generally L alpha amino acids. Now we know L because they are derived from the L glyceraldehyde. Alpha because amine, uh, NH3 plus group and CO negative group are present on the alpha carbon. That's why all amine, amino acids are L alpha amino acids. So if we talk about D amino acids. D amino acids are present in the peptidoglycan which is the cell wall of the bacteria and some antibiotics. Okay. So now we move on to the another system of the amino acid division that is the RS system. The other method to divide the absolute configuration of amino acid is known as the RS system. So what is RS system? R stands for rectus. C S stands for sinister. Rectus means right. Sinister means left. We are going to discuss it now. This is the structure of alanine and it is the tetrahedral representation. Now, if we want to know whether it will be an R amino acid or S amino acid, what we have to do is, first step is to give priority to the atoms attached to the central carbon. Give priority to the atoms attached to the central carbon according to their atomic number. Prioritize according to their atomic number. According to their atomic number. And after prioritizing according to them to their atomic number, we have to move from high priority to light, light, low priority. High to low priority, we have to move. Now I'll tell you how we do it. See, this carbon is attached to methyl group and NH3 plus group, a hydrogen atom is CO negative. So we know that it is attached to C, C, H and N. So we know nitrogen has high atomic number as compared to carbon. Carbon and uh, so nitrogen is having the highest atomic number. We will give priority number one to this. Then we see this carbon is attached to oxygen, whereas this carbon is attached to hydrogen. So priority number two will be this CO negative as it is uh, after this carbon, this carbon is have attached with oxygen, this is attached with H group and oxygen has more atomic number as compared to hydrogen. So second priority and third priority will be this because it is carbon and fourth priority will be this hydrogen atom. They can always ignore the priority number four. So ignore the priority number four, then move from high priority to low, means one to two to three. If we move from one to two to three, which, in which direction are we moving? This is a clockwise direction. If we see a clock, clock moves in this direction. So it is a clockwise direction. If it is a clockwise direction, then we can say it is R amino acid. Okay. And R amino acid means it will be D amino acid. 
in general. And if we check this one out, priority number one, this. Priority number two, priority number three, priority number four, we can ignore this. So it is moving in this direction. Which direction is this? Opposite to the clock direction. So it will be anti-clockwise direction. And if the direction is anti-clockwise, this will be S amino acid or we can say it will be L amino acid. So I, as I have already told you all that all the amino acid present in the protein are L alpha amino acid. Why L? Because they are derived from L glyceraldehyde. Why alpha? Because the NH3 plus group and CO negative group are attached to the alpha carbon atom. So all the amino acids are L alpha amino acid except glycine. Why glycine? Because glycine doesn't contain a chiral carbon. So if there is no chiral carbon, there will be no L or D forms. So glycine is the only exception to this. And second exception we must know is this. All the R amino acid present are D amino acid and all the S amino acids are L amino acid. The only exception to this is our amino acid cysteine. Cysteine, in case of cysteine, our amino acid is L amino acid. Okay, so now we will move on to standard amino acids and non-standard amino acids. Now, moving on to standard amino acids. What are standard amino acids? And what are non-standard amino acids? First of all, what are standard amino acids? So we must know there are more hundred, three hundred amino acids, more than three hundred amino acids present inside the cell. And out of these three hundred, only two twenty-two amino acids are those that are present in the protein. So these twenty-two amino acids, which are present inside the proteins, are known as standard amino acids. Okay, and out of these standard amino acids, leucine, serine, lysine and glutamate are the most abundant amino acids present in the protein. So we can say these are the most abundant amino acids present in the protein, whereas tryptophan and methionine are the rarest amino acid present in the protein. Now, if we divide amino acids according to their polarity, we can divide it into three categories. So first of all will be the amino acids with non-polar side chain. I will explain what it is. I will explain it to you. Then there will be amino acid with polar uncharged side chain. Then amino acid with polar and charged side chain. So we are going to divide all these 22 amino acids according to their Polarity. What is polarity? Polarity is whenever you want to understand a word, always break the word. So polarity is related to polar. And whenever the word is there is polar, it means it is related to water. So we can say polarity, it is the property of a substance to interact with water at a physiological pH. So if we say a compound is polar or an amino acid is polar, means it is water loving. When we say it is non-polar, then it means it is water hating. Okay, and if we know the basic concept, we can visualize in our mind that if we have a protein here, suppose this is a protein structure, and we have an amino acid that which is polar, this polar amino acid is water loving, so it will be present at the surface of the protein, okay, because it will interact with water. And if we have a non-polar amino acid, it will be present inside the center or the core of the protein as it is water hating. Okay, so now we are going to divide th these amino acids according to their polarity. So amino acids which have a non-polar side chain are various amino acids like glycine, leucine, valine and so on. We are going to discuss it later. Then amino acid with polar and uncharged side chain means th their side chain is polar, water loving, but they are having no charged on the, uh, no charged moiety on them. Then we have amino acid which is having a polar side chain that is also charged. Okay, so the, uh, mostly aspartate, glutamate, the acidic amino acids and the basic amino acid like lysine, arginine lies here. So now what we are going to discuss is the amino acid, it's three letter representation, it's what one letter codon and its structure. Okay, so now moving on to our next topic. First of all, we are going to discuss the amino acids with non-polar side chain. So if we talk about glycine, it's three letter representation is G, L, Y and one letter representation is G. So glycine, we know the basic structure of amino acid as we have discussed in the previous video, a carbon group attached to CO negative group and H3 plus H and R group. This R group as we have discussed is variable. If this R group is replaced by H, it will be glycine 
G. Alanine, if replaced by methyl group, it will be ALAA. If it is CH, CH3, CH3, it will be valine, VALV. Leucine, CH2, CH, CH3, CH3, LEU, L. Isoleucine, we know ISO represents the configuration, so ILE. Mostly, it is the first three letters, okay? And I. CH, CH3, CH2, CH3. For proline, we know it is an exceptional amino acid because it is containing an imine group. It's an amino acid. So the overall structure of proline is this. This is not the R group. This is the total structure of proline. It is represented by PRO and P. It is an amino acid. Methionine, MET, M, CH2, CH2, S, CH3. Phenylalanine, CH2. This benzene ring, PHE. F, then TRP, W, and this is the structure of tryptophan, CH2C, double bond CH, NH, and attached to a benzene ring. Okay, now we will move to the amino acids which are having polar side chain, but they are uncharged. Now, if we discuss amino acid with unpolar side, uncharged polar side chain, okay, uncharged polar side chain, just serine, which is having R group substituted by CH2OH, threonine, CHOH, CH3, cysteine, CH2SH, asparagine, CH2COH2, glutamine, CH2, CH2, CONH2, tyrosine, CH2, benzene, and OH. Okay, so if this is serine, it is represented by SERNS, threonine, THRT, cysteine, CYSC, asparagine, ASNN, Glutamine, DLNQ, tyrosine, TYR, Y. Okay, so these are the uh, one letter and three letter representation of these amino acids. And now we are moving on to charged polar side chain containing amino acid. And after that, I'm going to tell you an easy way to memorize the amino acids. We move to the charged polar side containing amino acids. It is lysine, arginine histidine which are having a positively charged side chain and then we have aspartate and glutamate having a negatively charged side chain okay and lysine is represented by lysk because l is already taken by leucine then we have arginine a r g r then we have histidine h i s h as arginine is R because A is already taken by alanine. Then we have for aspartate we have ASPD. For glutamate we have GLUE. So now if we see the structure of lysine, R group is replaced by CH2, 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 NH3 plus. In arginine it is CH2, 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 NH, CA, C double bond NH2 plus NH2. In histidine it is containing an imidazole ring. In aspartate, it is CH2, CO negative. In glutamate, it is CH2, CH2, CO negative. So now I am going to tell you how to classify these amino acids. See, we can say that in, if we divide the uh, amino acids according to their occurrence in protein, the maximum protein, uh, amino acid which is present maximum in protein is leucine and its percentage is 9.1%. The amino acid which is present in the minimum amount is tryptophan and its percentage is 1.4 percent okay and pi as we have discussed is the isoelectric point it is the ph at which the net charge on an amino acid is zero and there is no net electrophoretic mobility so arginine is having a maximum pi that is 10.76 and aspartate is having a minimum pi that is 2.77 okay now, if we divide the amino acids according to their chemical structure, the amino acid can be divided into these categories, aliphatic like glycine, alanine, valine, leucine. Sulfur containing like cysteine and methionine, they contain sulfur in them. CH2SH group as we have seen in the structure. Hydroxyl containing are serine and threonine. If we say aromatic, aromatic is like which is if we see chemistry which is following Huckel's rule or is having 4n plus 2 pi electron so we can generally memorize the aromatic amino acids are phenylalanine, tryptophan and tyrosine. If we talk about amino acid as we have discussed the amino acid is proline okay and the amino acid which are containing carboxylate group are aspartate and glutamate. The amino acids which are containing an amino group are lysine and arginine. The amino group acids containing an amide group that is CONH2 group are asparagine and glutamine. So now I hope I'm clear to you all now. So we will move on to non-standard amino acids.
if we talk about non-standard amino acids, so what are non-standard amino acids? This, we have discussed that there are, more, there are almost 300 proteins present inside the cell, amino acids present inside the cell. And out of those 300 amino acids, 22 are constituting pro proteins. Apart from that, there are other amino acids which are not directly contributing in protein, but are having some various other biological functions which are important. And these amino acids are made, named as non-standard amino acids or non-conventional amino acids. So, Ornithine and citrulline are the example. Ornithine and citrulline are involved in urea cycle and they are also the key intermediates for arginine biosynthesis. Arginine is an amino acid which we have discussed. Okay. As a serine is an amino acid which acts as an antibiotic. Okay. And these amino acids, namely 4-hydroxyproline, 5-hydroxylysine, desmosine, and acetylserine, and formylmethionine and gamma-carboxyglutamate are formed after post-translational modifications of normally occurring amino acids that are the standard amino acids. And this gamma-carboxyglutamate, this amino acid is found in a blood clotting protein known as prothrombin. Okay. So, if we say these are the amino acids and apart from that, it was thought that these non-conventional amino acids were present inside the protein after the post-translational modification. But there are some exceptions which are included in the protein during the translation process. For example, selenocysteine and pyrolysine. So, if we discuss about selenocysteine or pyrolysine, selenocysteine is also known as selenocysteine is also known as 21st amino acid then we have another amino acid pyrolysine this selenocysteine is having a structure similar to cysteine but instead of sulfur group it is having a selenium metal okay so it, if we write the structure This is the selenium instead of sulfur. And uh, so it is selenocysteine and uh, it is selenocysteine and pyrolysine are both incorporated during the translation process uh, and they are having their own tRNAs. It is coded by UGA and pyrolysine is coded by UAG. And both of these are stop codons but in special circumstances they are coding for these amino acids. So I hope I am clear to all of you, all of you now. That's all for today's video and in today's video we have discussed standard amino acids, non-standard amino acids and absolute configuration of amino acid that is the DL system and RS system and DL system is more majorly present in the amino acids. So please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for the overwhelming response and suggestions. Your suggestions are always welcome. Thank you so much.